What's up guys, welcome back to another electric skateboard video. Today we are taking a look at the all new M boards enclosures and how to install them. So we have just announced and released our two new battery and ESC enclosures to replace our version one. Uh, so we offer two different sizes, a little bit of a smaller one and then one that's about the same size as the last one. And then we plan to roll out more sizes and different shapes uh, to fit our customers needs in the future. So if you have any weird enclosure that you need or different sizes that you really can't find, let us know and we will try to uh, kind of hear everyone's feedback and then make the enclosures that kind of would help the broadest audience. So. Let us know in the comments. So before we jump into the new enclosures, let's take a look at where we came from, the version one battery and ESC enclosure. Uh, very low profile and it fit a ton of different battery sizes and ESCs. So after we initially released our first version of our enclosure, we started slowly getting feedback from our customers and we quickly realized that maybe we should have added extra screw holes to the outside of the enclosure so that way when the enclosure is mounted to the deck, it fits really tight against the deck and there's no weird gaps um, between the screws. So we definitely should have added more. So we added that to a list of things we wanted to fix. So we also discovered that the plastic around the screw holes was just a little bit too thin. So if the user wasn't super careful in the installation process, that it could actually crack that plastic and make the installation process just a little bit harder and less clean if you have a few cracks in your enclosure. So nobody really likes that. So once we collected the feedback from all of our customers, we started working on our version two and we immediately fixed all the issues that people had with version one. We also added a few new features to the version two as well. So the next new enclosure would be all around a, just a better enclosure in general. Our version two enclosure solves our concerns with the original design. There are plenty of screw holes to ensure a nice uniform fit. We strengthened the screw hole design in general. And along with the corrections, we also added a few new features a matte textured finish to better hide scratches. We included the hardware this time, whereas before it was up to our users to find their own hardware. We added a slight concave to the bottom of the enclosure so it would fit decks better and there would be less air gap. We added cable cutouts for routing motor and ESC wires. We added a second size for anyone looking for a smaller enclosure for any smaller batteries or ESC setups. Our original design had its screw holes drilled through a lip on the edge of the enclosure. When the hardware was placed through the screw hole, it wasn't very forgiving if your wood inserts weren't placed exactly in the right place on your deck. With the new design, the hardware is able to be adjusted a lot more, so if your insert is misplaced by a bit, you'll be able to steer your screw in the right direction. So those are all the corrections and upgrades. Let's get into the installation process. So to start, your enclosure will come with a few things. Obviously the enclosure itself, a foam gasket, and then all of your necessary wood inserts and screws to actually attach the enclosure to your deck. So before you start going drilling holes and getting this thing attached to your deck, you wanna lay all your parts out. Lay your trucks on your deck or even attach your trucks to your deck. Make sure you have all your motors and everything attached. Lay out your enclosure and make sure there's enough room for your motors to have plenty of space so they're not too close. As you turn on your board and as the trucks are moved to one side or the other to actually steer you, They'll, the motors get a little bit closer to your enclosure. So you wanna make sure there's a little bit of a gap to just make sure that, that nothing is too close. You don't wanna have a spinning motor rubbing up against your enclosure. It's just not gonna work out for you. So once you have everything placed and you like where everything is at and you have enough gap between everything and you're comfortable, then we can get started actually getting this thing installed to your deck. So the gasket that's included with your enclosure is used as obviously the gasket to make sure your enclosure is a little bit more watertight, but it's also used as somewhat of a template so you know exactly where you should be drilling your holes. First off, you wanna grab your gasket and push out all the little screw hole fillers. Um, just poke them out. They're just there during the manufacturing process just to make sure everything kind of stays in one sheet so it ships to you better. Um, but just punch all those out, revealing the screw holes, and lay down your gasket exactly where you want your enclosure to be on your deck. And then we'll throw something like heavy, like in our case, we'll use a bag of screws um, to keep it in place. Once we start using this as a template, we wanna be very careful that we don't bump it during the uh, templating process because once you bump it, once you already, once you started, it's very hard to get everything back in order. So once you have the gasket on your uh, deck and it's and it's held down with a piece of something heavy, like bag of screws again, uh, you want to take a sharpie and start taking the tip of the sharpie and poking it through each hole, leaving a mark on your deck. 
That way when you remove the, the gasket off your deck, you have a clean and visible way of seeing where your screw holes need to be and exactly where your gasket's going to line up. So once you finish marking your deck and you have a clean layout of where everything's gonna go and you have marks for all your screws, we can start drilling holes for our wood inserts. Uh, before I jump all the way up to a drill bit that's, that'll accommodate the width of my wood insert, I start off with a little bit of a thinner drill bit just so I have like a little bit of a pilot hole so that way a thicker drill bit doesn't start wandering and scratch my deck. I've had that happen a couple times and it's so sad to have a beautiful brand new deck and just to scratch the hell out of it with a drill bit. It's not fun. So I usually just start with a little bit of a thinner drill bit just to, just to be safe. If you're really good with the drill, then, you know, go for it. But I just want to be a little bit safe and I'll use a little bit of a smaller drill bit. So once I finish drilling my pilot holes, I will start moving up to my larger drill bit. But to be sure that I don't drill too deep or not deep enough, I will take a wood insert, lay it up against my drill bit and mark off on my drill bit where I need to stop drilling. So that way all my holes are perfectly deep enough so that way my wood inserts fit nicely in there and, and uh, they're not too deep, they're not sticking up, they're nice and flush with the bottom of my deck. So there's two ways of thinking about it. We give you guys just regular wood inserts or just inserts. A lot of times they're used for 3D printing. In our case, we're using them to obviously mount our enclosure, but there's also threaded wood inserts. And if you wanna use those, you totally can. I found in the past where especially some of these decks with that are made with a lot of harder woods, it's very hard to get the, the, the threads to actually take into the wood. And a lot of times they'll fall out over time. So what we do is we give you some regular unthreaded inserts and then we'll use a two-part epoxy or a super glue to glue those inserts within those holes. Just seems like it holds a lot better. So once you get your inserts glued into your deck, hold off for a minute. Do not install your enclosure fully yet. The last thing you want to do is throw your hardware into those inserts while there is wet glue uh, in your deck. You don't want to glue it all shut. So Set it aside for a while, let it dry, look at the directions on your super glue or two-part epoxy. I recommend the two-part epoxy, just it's a little quicker um, and really, really strong. Um, but anyways, once that's dry and you know nothing's wet and you're not gonna glue your hardware into your inserts, then you can move forward. Uh, from there, we'll simply just take our gasket and we'll peel off the backing paper a little at a time and pretty much by eye, just taking the screw holes through the gasket and aligning them with the screw holes of the inserts we have in your deck. And you'll go around the entire gasket until all the paper is ripped off and you have it all lined up. So just take your time here. You, you wanna try to get your lines as far as your gasket goes as, as straight as you possibly can. So once you have your gasket adhered to your deck, it's time to throw everything into your enclosure and then flip your enclosure over and finally install the enclosure with the provided screws. Uh, just kind of go around in circles, tightening a little bit at a time until everything is nice and tight. You don't want to over tighten it though, but you do want to make sure the entire enclosure is uniformly pressed up against that uh, gasket nicely. So that way water and puddles and splashes and all that don't end up inside your enclosure and with your electronics. So if you are worried about the weight of all your items, like a big battery and an ESC, pulling the wood inserts out of the bottom of the deck and you're worried that maybe your contents are a little too heavy, um, First of all, if, you've, if you use a two-part epoxy or super glue, you should be good. There's plenty of screws to, to distribute all that weight across all the, the glued points. But if you are worried that something might fall out, take a, a double-sided piece of 3M tape and tape your battery and your electronics to the bottom of your deck. That way the deck is the one that's holding all of the weight and the, and the tape is pulling all the weight off of your enclosure and the enclosure is simply just a cover and not an actual container. So if, if you're afraid of that, you can go that route. But again, I've done it multiple times where nothing, the weight is not an issue. So you should be totally fine. But if you wanna be double safe, then get that weight off of your enclosure. It's probably best practice to do that anyway, but that's just a little tip for your future build. So yeah. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, we try to make a lot of different uh, tutorials on this channel. We have a lot of stuff coming this year. In 2020, we have a new couple new series coming out. Uh, so if you have any tutorial requests, please put them down in the description. We do read them and we, we do care about people's opinions on our videos. So let us know if you have any questions. We're, we're pretty active down there as far as answering questions and concerns and all that. Uh, please subscribe because we have, again, a ton of content coming out. So thank you guys for watching and all the, all the products we use today will be linked down in the description in case you are curious. So uh, anyways, thank you and I will see you guys in the next one.